not tired of the little drops of mercy we are pleading let there be showers um, he wrote an inscription behold the king and one of the translations say so that everyone that passes my what read it god has written and designed that you live your life for legacy legacy after you the reason many of you are not serious is because you don't understand that you are carrying generations you are carrying you don't understand so you can afford to live recklessly live anyhow because you are not aware that what you are carrying some have gone ahead of you and they are waiting for you to make impact so that they can be made perfect Paul is looking up to you because without you catching up the grace that he spoke about his labor will be in vain that those are the people the bible says we are compassed with great a cloud of witnesses paul joshua moses all of them they are looking at you they are saying please don't miss it please don't miss it without you if you miss it our work will be in vain the bible says god in hebrews 11 having provided some better things for us that they without us will not be made perfect all the beatings paul received all the stripes on paul's back paul took all those stripes because he knew a generation will come that will perfect all his labor so they are looking at you rather than fasting you are eating they are bleeding rather than living for righteousness but listen even if your life is on the line live for righteousness i saw a scripture hebrews 12 verse 4 it changed me hebrews 12 4 but you will not understand it properly in the king they say you have not resisted unto blood striving against sin give me the message translation it's an all-out match against sin others have suffered far worse far worse than you to say nothing of what jesus went through all that bloodshed give me amplified listen you have not struggled and fought agonizingly against sin nor have you yet resisted and withstood to the point of pouring out your own blood that i rather die than to do this let my blood be spilled than to do this it is that aggressive stand it takes to live righteous and i can tell you nothing brings peace like that stand You think people that are comfortable make impact you can't be comfortable and make impact peter was warming himself by the fire giving pleasure to his king he denied the master anytime you seek for pleasure you are about to deny him and who denies him is worse than who betrays him betrayer from an expected tool denier from an unexpected friend who are you tagging along i've told you you cannot be loyal to saul and expect to reign with david jonathan was loyal because david, david told him clearly you are going to be my deputy jonathan so he loved David, but he still maintained a level of loyalty. And God said, you can't be at the fence. Knowing somebody is seeking your future. Somebody is contending your tomorrow. To kill the man who you will be standing as a deputy for. And you are trying to be loyal. He joined Saul's entourage and died in Saul's accident. Shattaka paradise. 
you are selfish and self-centered when your life is all about you begin to live with legacy mentality start living for legacy start living for legacy psalm chapter 2 verse 8 ask of me the hidden for thy inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession proverbs 13 22 i think he said a good man liveth an inheritance it's time to start living with there are children tied to you two nations are in thy womb be upstanding everybody look at me when i see some of you say you are christian john is what is john when reverend john and, and reverend kinsley reverend kinsley first i will pass through their house his house 5 a.m sometimes 4 a.m they have not opened their front door i will be hitting the door sometimes i go to his window bo, bo, wake up wake up we are going for prayer walk wake up wake up the first time Reverend John prayed with me, it was at Igbiadoka Street. I said, I'm having vigil. Come and join me. He said, okay, sir. When he got there, some minutes to 11, I didn't even say hello or hi. I took off my shirt, took off my trousers. I was with Bossa. I positioned and held my, the, my side of the bench and was speaking in tongues from 11 to 5. When I finished, I said, we we'll continue tomorrow. That was the only conversation. Next day, I was there. One of the times I was, I stood up, I was praying. My eyes caught him. It was just like this. <laughs> Remember then, by the time we just take a prayer point, then we'll go under the dining. You see us squat. All you'll be hearing is groaning, not speaking in tongues. All you are hearing. Mm, mm, but today people are looking for cars people are looking for wealth the things that you are looking for pursue us naturally because we pursue the giver of all things you want to take your world you want to go around your world you want to become an outstanding businessman you want to become an outstanding businessman When my prayer partner, Pastor Shego and I used to pray, I would just, in the middle of the prayer, would, after we rest for like some, I'll start calling some amount of money. Maybe you have forgotten. I'll call some amount of money. I'm just calling, bah! When we are going into Lagos, we'll, we'll pray at a certain camp. We are going to Lagos after some days to go and buy food to break our fast. In the car, I'll be telling him, I say, hey, 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 sir, you don't understand. The things that are calling me are too many. I said, the kind of money I'm going to have. I came to that prayer meeting through boss boss I came on public transport but I was some something inside me like like David my heart indicted the good matter he has made my mouth the pen of a ready writer something inside me was crying I remember the first time locally I was giving money to fly from Benin to Lagos. I was comfortable with my Edo line. I was very comfortable. I said, wait, Lord, fly? I said, no. All I heard the Lord tell me was, fly. I said, no. I will get to Lagos. In fact, a door line is slow and steady. The Lord said, fly. The Spirit of God will not strive with you. He just said, fly. I was going to Associated Airline. You, know the, you can know the generation I'm talking about. I was going to Associated Airport grudgingly. We landed in less than 30 minutes. I was angry. I was because that money could do many things. Oh, you have not been in that condition before. That money could meet many needs. Just a fraction of it can take me to Lagos. So why will I use everything? 
Nobody's pursuing me. I, in fact, I don't want to go early. Let me come late. Less than, I said, the only thing about this place is that we got here early. I'm not in a rush. And the Lord began to talk to me. He said, there are levels that will open up to you. If you don't begin to understand the terrain, you will not fit into that level. This generation of young men is so appalling. Even young ministers to see what their priorities are. This is not what our priorities were 25 years ago. No. This is not what our priorities were. It's so annoying to see what their priorities are. No seriousness. No focus. No dedication, no commitment, no sacrifice. On serious. If you are around this ministry, you notice if you walk closely and you are sensitive. Every year my life is getting more spiritual. Every year gets better. That thing you are pursuing. That mundane thing you are pursuing. Start thinking of legacy. There are people that are connected to your loins. They are already getting disappointed. Because you are not charging them up. They are already losing faith in, in, in craving for spiritual things. I want to pray for you see, see tonight i am ready and i am sent to specific people who want to live for legacy god is about to release an outstanding anointing for people who want to make some some deliberate and definite impact the spirit drive at him Bring up Mark 1 verse 12 again. Bring up Mark 1 12. And immediately the spirit drive it in. Can I ask you something? Is that correct in English language? Huh? This was a reportage of an occurrence. You're not getting me. The right word would have been the spirit drove him. He was trying to let you know that it is still relevant for anyone who wants it today. Who is ready? I'm tired of allowing passion drive me. Clothes, pursuit of money. Let the spirit drive me. of you know that there are certain diseases that are viral the coronavirus when somebody has it they say you go close you become infected right ordinary coronavirus can make impact any carrier of the virus is impacting lives negatively and you carry the anointing the Holy Ghost inside of you Catherine Kuma was in a hotel and the front the whole the hallway the reception was crowded they were waiting for her so the manager of the hotel took her through the back where they were cooking and all that as she was some meters close the cook the cookie the uh, the chef everybody was on the ground the power knocked them she passed through 
as the manager was trying to prevent people from holding out the power knocked him and she said leave them alone none can touch me the power knocked down everybody she walked straight to her car the driver turned on the car and started jacking the power knocked him on the seat John G. Lake was a man that none of his members stand close to him the members stay six feet from him because if you attempt to make it five feet it was compulsory social distancing what was their secret the spirit driveth me there's a way a man can have a business idea people will just start lining up with that business idea they won't know what is moving them just this business idea that seemingly doesn't make natural sense but is making financial impact a lot on our side because the Holy Ghost has empowered it I was talking to the Lord two nights ago I said I don't want to be just another pastor I don't want Omega Farm Ministry to be just another church there are many churches that have sound choir members listen to this sound air conditioners good drum set active but in the sight of God he sees them as orthodox no power not just orthodox he sees them as weak because these days some orthodox churches are even coming on that strong fire the charismatic is coming on fire you are still having time for nonsense i came to spoil you into the place of prayer i came to spoil you that you have you live here with a generational mentality there are things you cannot say places you cannot go because thousands of people are connected to you as you take one step it is nations that are working as you move nations are moving you are connected there are people in the states there are people in the uk there are people in asia there are businesses you are supposed to be flying to business meetings and the enemy is localizing you by reason of an attitude that god is not pleased with Who's ready to pray? Empower me to live for legacy. That's our prayer. Empower me to live. exam that is set for you know the syllabus know how to apply the answer and still fail god said the key to this next level is this prize do this do this he has shown you the way and you are still failing lift up your right hand lift your right hand to heaven say my father my father in the name of Jesus, as I begin to pray, empower me to live for legacy. Open your mouth and fire prayers. Oh, 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 oh,
a man called John Rockefeller they called that God's businessman they called him God's businessman this man was so blessed in the business world there are some of you looking at me who are into politics who are into business God positioned you there for the very top this man city he enters he visits some churches <laughs> a particular pastor built a very massive cathedral worth millions of dollars they say how did you get the money he said your Rockefeller passed by he didn't come he was just passing and he saw the church and called the pastor 10 million dollars one time the government in America began to tax him they wanted to reduce his wealth they tax 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 he will pay they said there's nothing they can do to this man let us look for an issue and bring down their church they said that is what will break him just like Daniel when they say there's nothing we can do except in the law of his God they went to Rockefeller's church and brought the Buddhists and brought the building down he, the pastor was crying he told the pastor said no he has actually been complaining there is a kind of building he saw he said but he didn't know how to tell him that we should bring this one down and give him two months to raise the other one when he built this one he burnt bricks you know bricks he burnt bricks something that is almost impracticably pos impossible to easily bring down raise the place that in two months and he told the government bring it down and build a better one is the John Rockefeller till now apart from Mensa Musa apart from Mensa Musa that was in Malian John Rockefeller is the wealthiest man after King Solomon Is the wealthiest man after King Solomon. Even Amazon that had a massive outbreak during this coronavirus period, this lockdown, is still not close to half of the wealth. There is what they call Rockefeller Foundation. Every month he has over 300 grandchildren. Every December they give each of them one million dollars for Christmas. They have been doing that for over 30 years. The money has not finished. This he was not a pastor, he was in the business world. All he did was an anointing to live for legacy. I've said this to my wife, and I've said it to myself I will be the wealthiest. By the time we come, that's when they say men of God that are blessed. I will be the wealthiest, but still be on t shirts blasting in tongues. I'll be the wealthiest that when people come around, they see me praying. They say, Are you sure is the person? My passion for God will still be on a crazy temperature. Passion, crazy for God.
get it it's time it's time for a lecturer it's time to make an impact there's a way man can stand in front of a class and demons are crying out he's starting to lecture and demons are screaming crying out it's time for you to be walking through the corridors of the bank and people are running after you master master have mercy on me by reason of what is coming you are a banker by reason of what is exuding from you who we'll take that prayer again are you ready holy father We wait on you. We wait on you.